All right, so we are back. back. Second time, episode number two is actually filmed, and I did not turn on the audio, so we had an amazing show. Uh, so we know the stories, potentially. I do have not the greatest memory on planet Earth, but... I hope it's as good as the first time. <laughs> so uh, welcome to the counteroffer. Essentially, we take the news and we counteroffer it with our opinion, our excellence, on meeting with clients and people that are potential clients and it's a little bit different because a lot of people headline lead or they read it and then they don't actually go into the story case in point is one of eric's stories so i'll start it off the number one thing actually if you want to go first mine is <laughs> loaded right now okay uh at the root of nyc's housing crisis a decades-long problem of supply not meeting demand so everybody knows the supply and demand in New York City has been off since COVID. There's yeah. never enough apartments. There's always too many people looking for apartments. And obviously that's been driving up the price. So this article had a few key statistics that I thought were pretty good. Uh, 5,246. That is the average rent in Manhattan in August 2022, up from 4,094 in August 21 according to a Douglas Elliman report. That's crazy. Yeah, so 5,200, 5,250 for your average rent in Manhattan. I mean, go across the country and tell people that they're gonna say you're nuts. So it's funny, since it was actually yesterday, my friends, or they obviously know I'm in real estate, so they'll DM me articles and they'll say something. And yesterday it was saying actually, the average income needed to rent is 160. 160 and he doesn't live in the city and he's not happy about it but based on that metric it's 40 times the rent so it'd be over 200,000 yeah so, so you really need to be uh, <laughs> living with a roommate or living with uh, somebody else you know it's significant other married so what the he, only way to get that combined, what he basically. brought up is he was an old roommate and our rent when we first moved into Murray Hill was eleven hundred dollars Wow it was also a studio when, when that they that? illegally put into a two bedroom. So yeah. <laughs> he had no exit, you know. So it's one of those things that it's, you know, you, I, how many, how many, uh, 5,200, you know, so that would probably be, that's a one bedroom in most places. You know, there has to be more housing built, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But that's, that's, that's a lot of rent, you know. It, probably will push people to buy and we'll we'll track that it makes it harder for the families yeah and a lot of people during yeah. covid didn't want to live with roommates so they went and got good deals on studios now amazing the studio deals. prices have gone up so they're back yeah. to either living with a roommate or moving neighborhoods but yeah also it said 560,000 the number of apartments that must be built by 2030 to accommodate population growth according to the real estate board of new york that's not uh, happening. E, that's not happening, and it doesn't seem like Five hundred and sixty thousand <laughs> units. Like how many units come on a year? It's only like for uh, rent. It's maybe what four thousand, three thousand, five. You know. Like, well, and a lot of developers have been getting burned over the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, so the good thing about New York is you have to file your building so early that there's always kind of a pipeline. But, yeah. Uh, filing and it's new years. Permits, yeah. It's, it's not friendly to developers yeah. you know there was there was also something that came out on how many vacant homes there are right I think it was like 30,000 vacant homes in the city because there was no incentive for them to upgrade it to livable conditions so they just have it vacant you and know rent like stabilized and the whole mess yeah over there so yeah it's uh, wild. well on that vacancy rate 0.9 percent wow is the vacancy rate for apartments renting between 801 and 1499 yeah so i don't know where you can find apartments like that but there is record low vacancy rate all across the city and yeah. uh anybody is just resigning their lease they get their lease renewal they say i don't want to move i just got here yep resign it makes the uh, vacancy rate so low and what we talked about last time is that management companies benchmark is one percent vacancy so if it's above one percent then they're more willing to work with tenants when it comes to lease renewals right. or rents but when it's below one percent it's like, no, like that, that's, that's kind of like the benchmark within sales is how much inventory is on the market. If you have inventory of six months, then it's a healthy market. You know, obviously the suburbs, you know, they, they, they've been inventory like one week 
or like a month now and they're like freaking out oh my god it's been on the market for a month you know <laughs> so the benchmark in rentals is one percent the benchmark in sales is six months if it's under that it's a seller's market if it's over that it's a buyer's market we're clearly in a buyer's market in new york city it's a, it's a shifting market i don't i don't look at that as a bad or good market i just look at people when it's a seller's market buyers go like this and they sit in cash until it becomes you know the investors are going to come in now they've been sitting on cash and we'll see what the sales is going to be like they're going to come in scoop it up they've been through the game and that's how people just continually build wealth in real estate so moving on to my story you know talking about home sales that the home showing traffic is still declining but at a much lower rate you know we talked about this so showing time which is i think the largest appointment setting organization right now like they had showing time essentially was picked up by zillow trulia and now street easy and that's how you make appointments to see a home so they have all the data collection on seeing homes <laughs> like there is no one that comes close to showing time so they analyze 70 markets and ironically enough contrary to belief is that the west and northeast regions experience the best pickup or the slowest decline so when everyone was exiting california going to say texas and you know utah arizona all the states that maybe had more land lower taxes things like that new york going to florida is ironically enough those are the states new york northeast and the west which are actually experiencing the slowest decline in showing the ones with the biggest are the south and midwest and they had the so it just it just shows migration patterns and i wonder if people are moving back or they're considering buying you know it's it's very interesting yeah you know it's well showing time's pretty interesting and the tracking of the data obviously the data speaks for itself people aren't going out and looking at apartments as much as they did uh coming off of a big boom like that you know it's not really much of a surprise yeah uh you can put up open houses these days and not get any interest whatsoever so yeah. a lot of people are used to looking online watching videos and you know aren't really going out to see property but if you're actually going to go ahead and purchase something you're obviously going to want to step foot in it yeah so. yeah you're going to want to step foot in it and video is it you know we we've been ahead of the curve on that and to be honest i think anyone that has video is definitely going to have a higher increase of appointments so definitely definitely have video on your listings well and that is a good segue into my article that is renting site unseen question mark a broker and facetime help so this is a great new york times article just talking about how somebody moving from out of state they had some life changes they were coming back into the city and uh the broker and the facetime made them so comfortable with where they were going. It yeah. was as if they knew where they were going to be before they even had to step foot in it. Because yeah. sometimes you're not able to come and see employees. And that's like with uh, showing time, you know, not everybody is able to go and check out a place before they see it. So what you need is some feet on the street, a good broker and a video. And, you know, for renting in particular, that's kind of all you need. Yeah, it w the trend that we really saw in 2020, a lot of people did not renew their leases. That's why the rent went down so much. And they either moved to a place outside of the city, whether it was along the Hudson Valley or going to Miami or even moving back in with their parents. And they're just saying, listen, I'm not going to pay rent if I can't do anything in New York City. They returned. It drove up the rent. And ironically enough is that the people that were returning to the city were all coming from a place they, like you said, they were remote. They, they were in the Hudson Valley and they weren't going to just come down for one apartment showing. So video on a rental is crucial. And, you know, Eric's rented almost 200 properties. So if, if, if you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier when it's on fire, but it definitely helps that get the highest price, the most qualified, the most people rented as quick as possible. Well, it's actually uh, brings up something I've been talking about all week is that, you know, over the last couple of years, it became very transactional. Sometimes you'd even rent an apartment. You'd never even meet the person face to face. Yeah. So these last couple of months, you know, especially working with buyers, there is a much more like opportunity for a client relationship. Yeah. You actually have like a lot of interaction with them as opposed to the years past where you were just uh, kind of deals were flying off the shelf. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And moving on to the final story, contract cancellations are on the rise. And this is this was surprising, honestly, when I read this. So according to Redfin, which is a gigantic organization when it comes to collecting data, they pretty much have 
probably every homeowner, the name, the price, everything. So anything they say, they've analyzed and they know because it's a private company and private, right? Redfin? Yeah. yeah no, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. So they said nationwide that 64,000 agreements just in August. 64,000 home purchase contracts fell through, and that's the equivalent of 15% of the homes that went into contracts. That's crazy that 15% of the homes that went into contracts fell through. You know, we talked about it a little bit on Tuesday when we were filming the other video, but how is that happening? You know, like what's, what's, is it because the rates went up and now they can't afford it? Is it because the pricing has gone down and the, and they, you know, put some a clause in the contract for the inspection. There, there has to be a way to get out of it because in Manhattan, you it's it's nearly impossible. You'll lose your ten percent. Yeah, but that we were talking about at the other video was uh, mortgage contingencies, appraisal yep. contingencies, appraisal yeah, contingencies. Because that is going to make it so you know as the home prices are coming down, are the banks still seeing the value yep. that they did over the last couple of years? I mean, it's pretty hard to imagine an apartment that was sold in the last two years being more expensive than it is now. Yeah. So is it going to appraise? Uh, that's why cash is always king in that sense. But I did think about one more uh, idea, and that is uh, contingent on selling your home. Wow. So there are definitely, especially, you know, in New York yeah. it doesn't happen as often, but it's like I'll purchase this for this price if I can sell my apartment and I get, you know, yep. six months or three months to do that. And, uh, you know, and a it's at a certain it's price, selling. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, they're expecting this price to then take that to move it to their new home purchase, but they're not getting that. So now they have to put down more, higher yeah. interest rates. And the only reason the seller is going to agree to doing that is because the purchase price on their home is going to be so great. Yeah. So they say, oh, wow, I'm going to get this great price if they sell theirs. Well, it shouldn't be a problem to sell a nice New York City apartment. Yeah. And then they're finding out, you know, the market's super slow. So yeah, yeah, it's it's that's one of the toughest contingencies to, to sell an owner on. And to be honest, I just don't feel because so many things could go wrong, especially in a co op, you know, it's like it's delayed. Number one, the board could say no, the appraisal, the contingencies for financing, you know, I was in a deal and I was telling the owner, I said, listen, we have to close. It closed about two weeks ago. I'm like, we have to close because if we put this back on the market, we're not going to get the price that we're in contract with. So we were pushing everything forward. We were doing whatever we could. We were paying for closing fees. We were close, uh, paying for uh, the rate lock extension, which was a few hundred dollars per week that it didn't close. The owners were like, listen, it's worth it because if we put it on, it's twenty to $30,000 less. So this, you know, we'll just conclude on this is you need to hire a professional based on these statistics that are actually going through understanding the market and telling you the actual story, not the headline, because the headline says home traffic is declining. Then the other headline is contract cancellations are on the rise. But if you don't have a broker that doesn't know how to analyze it and actually say this is what it means, then it's going to be a tough time and probably frustrating time. Yeah. you know, that, that you go through it. Well, if you ever want to get out of a contract, it would be best to be working with a broker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a I good mean, attorney. You put that on yeah. them, so. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna Zoom, you know, attorneyzoom.com to draw that purchase application. Yeah, I mean, pre-COVID, there was a lot of people that would go out on their own or they'd rent apartments on their own and this and that. I thought that kind of changed. I'm seeing it come back a little bit after COVID, but it is such a difficult business right now. And with all the random experiences, getting out of a contract, this and that, showing uh, showing the, the right down, price. You know, it's like you really have to work with somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. So we go live or actually, no, we record every Tuesday, obviously this Tuesday. I messed up with the audio. Never going to happen again. We yeah, have visualization sure that. that there's recording levels going on. So we're going to be going uh, two stories every single Tuesday. Eric doesn't know what I'm going to say. He doesn't know what I'm going to bring in. And then we kind of banter back and forth. And it's always stories that are important. We're not going to talk about, you know, silly stories that, you know, don't really affect the purchase or the I sale of the home. Like do that. Yeah. What, the, the silly <laughs> stories? <laughs> All right, so we'll see you uh, next Tuesday, and until then, signing off.